awesome. Um, so this is this is how we uh, get started our our uh, our startup weekends. You can sing along if you know the song. Okay, all right, so awesome. So thank you all for playing along with me. I know this is an improv group, so I'm, I'm glad that uh, I got you. I was thinking I was gonna look like a jerk up here clapping by myself, but I, I appreciate that, because that's uh, what we do at Startup Weekend, how we get all of them started is about uh, taking a group of people, getting their energy up, getting their enthusiasm on a particular area, and then letting them go, letting, giving them all of the tools that they need in order to be let loose, and then turning that into a learning experience. And I'm going to tell you about my 18-month uh, learning experience having run Startup Weekend Education and what we've been doing. And I tongue-in-cheekly uh, created a, a topic for this, uh, Occupy uh, Ed Tech. Uh, it's not quite as uh, protest and sit in as it might sound. Uh, there will be no uh, sitting in, no protesting. I won't try to stop traffic or anything like that. Um, but I am um, hoping that you'll get the analogy as we go, as uh, there's, there's a couple of parallels between uh, the, the themes of Occupy and what was going on there and, and what's going on within education and what we're trying to do uh, with Startup Weekend Education. So uh, anecdotally, I don't have a lot of experience with the Occupy movement. I have one uh, 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 anecdotal experience that I will do what you're not supposed to do and extrapolate into an understanding of the, the root causes and, and design of the organization. Uh, but I was in K Street one day in DC, I'm from Baltimore, and I was walking there and the Occupy movement had decided to shut down K Street. And so they were all sitting in the streets and they had their arms uh, bound and they had a really interesting system where one person would walk around and go mic check, mic check, and the other person would go mic check and then they'd get up and they'd talk. And uh, they, it, was, it was interesting, but they, they weren't doing anything. It was really interesting. It was hard for me to, to, to ascertain like, what their purpose was and what were, you, what were you guys doing? And it was raining, and some people were walking away and leaving because uh, it, was, it was going away, and the police were kind of waiting for the numbers to kind of dwindle down to a small enough group where they could go in there and impose themselves and arrest some folks. Um, but it was, it, was, it was chaotic. But um, I sat there in a coffee shop and I watched what was going on and, uh, and what, what, what I like to do is, is try to see the message in the madness and that's what I like to call Startup Weekend Education. There's this, this cacophony of stuff going on um, but there's a, there's, a, there's a message overall within the madness of it and I want to talk to you guys about the design of that and how we've been trying to figure out uh, this, this process of, of bringing together people who don't normally get together and having them create uh, teams and form ways to be able to solve uh, education problems. So anyway, the, the thing about the, the, uh, the, the, the Occupy movement that I really appreciated was that they were willing to take action. That was the first thing. They didn't quite know strategically what action to take necessarily, but they knew that they were upset. They knew that they, were, they, were, they had some initiative. They knew that they wanted to do something. They knew that they were powerful as a group and they were gonna do something. And then iteratively, my hope for the organization and for us as a society is that they learn strategically how to take that initiative and get it to a place where it produces a little bit more um, results. So what I wanted to talk about is this application to education entrepreneurship. So uh, there's, a, there's down the road there in San Francisco, there's a lean startup conference going on and there are, right now, and they're, they're talking about uh, startups as a, as a learning entity and how you go through this process of creating something and then iterating and learning and trying to find a customer. And, um, and we've, at Startup Weekend, we, we teach a lot of this philosophy. We're experimenting with what, how do you do uh, entrepreneurship on a, on a higher scale. Um, but one of the things that happens is that there's this, there's this, there's this uh, a technique called a pivot. And, and a pivot literally is to, is to have one foot grounded and to move the other. And it's about learning as you're, as you're building your organization whether or not you have a sustainable business and then moving, changing strategy without changing the vision. And um, what often happens in education specifically is, is as you apply those, those startup principles, what you have is company A forms a company within education and they produce a product and they go out and search for a sustainable business model. And when they cannot find one or it's difficult, they start to pivot. And when, when you pivot, you have to have one foot stationary and one moving. And so they're either going to stick with the existing customer and, and change their product and try to find some, some way to solve that customer's problem, or they go off and look for a customer who's willing to pay for that 
product that they're making. And oftentimes, the struggle is that they, they often change their customer. And this was the, the, the trend that we were seeing within education. And it was around, there were lots of education products, but when you started to really ask yourself, who was the customer? Who was this product designed for? Who paid the bills for this product? It was often not about education or about the teacher or about the, the, the student or about the student outcomes. It was a, it was a money-making institution. And so we said, what do we, what do we need to do? How does Startup Weekend Education help this? And, and this was our design philosophy, which was, you know, you start with the problem and then you design the solution to it. And then from our standpoint, you go off and you do it. You build it, you create it, you go and solve this problem. Then you go and talk to a customer and, and that customer tells you, what problem you actually solved for them. And then you go back through the loop again. You say, oh, that's the problem that you were looking to solve. That's what it was. And rather than trying to go on a search for a customer, what you do is you go on a search for uh, how you can better meet that customer's need necessarily. So that's the depth of my Occupy movement. But here we go. So we're, here we're going to go into all the, the depths of my analogy and see if you can follow me along with this on this strange journey. So a couple. Um, points about Occupy, right? So the first one is to take, to fill up space and time, right? So Startup Weekend got involved in this because somebody, the Kauffman Foundation, said, hey, what would it take? We have all these people out there in the consumer tech world, and what would it take for them to occupy their time with education problems? What if we took all these, all these IQ points out there and said, what if, what if we gave them some education problems to noodle on? What, what great things could come out of that? And so um, Startup Weekend was a natural entry point for that. So for those of you that don't know, um, Startup Weekend brings together designers, developers, entrepreneurs, and we create these project-based learning environments where you pitch an idea, you form a team, and you go off and you build that solution in a weekend, in 54 hours. And we bring all these different resources in to be able to help you be able to do that. Um, but in, in a nutshell, uh, we, we've done these events, we've done over a thousand events, we're in, in 290 cities building communities in, in over 90 countries. Uh, and so it was a natural place to say, where can we go and find the raw materials of these people who understand this consumer tech world, and how can we, we, we nudge them to occupy their time with some, with some education ideas? And so we started doing that. We said, okay, let's just do an event and we'll theme it in education and it'll be great. And we'll create some education solutions and everybody will be happy. And um, <clears throat> why that works is, uh, well, I, I kind of told you a little bit already that we, we practice this, this thing called bait and switch education. So from this standpoint, um, you guys all come with this passion and you go and you go through this design process. Um, the entrepreneurs that I work with also come with a passion, but um, they don't want to go through the thinking process so much. They want to go and do the doing, right? And so what we do is we bring them in and we tell them to go and do, right? We say, you can go be awesome, right? And they're like, I'm awesome and I want to be awesomer. And I, all I need is somebody to recognize my awesomeness. And so we say, look, we, we, we've got co-founders, you've got designers, you've got developers, you've got coaches here, you've got venture, there's guys with millions of dollars ready to give them away coming on Sunday, here it is, go be awesome. And we give them everything they need and they go and they start doing, so that, that's the one caveat, is that you have to do it, right, in that weekend, no more excuses. And so when they start doing it, inevitably, they stumble. They, 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 they launch something and nobody buys it, and chirp and tweets and crickets. Or they, they can't um, design something and they don't know how to design it. And then all of a sudden, there's an opportunity there. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a knowledge gap, there's a learning gap. Somewhere along the line, they run into what they didn't know, they didn't know. And all of a sudden, the event turns into education. And so we kind of sneak it in there on the sly there. And so the mentors and coaches come in and they give you this awesome experience and people leave there having gotten what they didn't even, what they couldn't even articulate to us that they actually needed. And so we use this as a context to now open up these knowledge gaps and then show people that what they actually needed was actually right there in the community the whole time and they didn't know it. Like we don't do anything magical, we just bring together what's already there. Right? And then we, we give them a context to have this learning environment and they didn't know that this person over there could teach them what they needed or this person over there had this resource or they could look internally and learn some more design skills. So I'm gonna pick it up because I'm running a little short there. Uh, so um, anyway, we bring together people, we form stronger teams, we do, and then we use this mentor, educate, motivate strategy. So the first design challenge I told you was how do we get um, 
people to occupy their time with education challenges. Well, the problem with that is that we didn't get very good solutions coming out of it. They didn't have the depth of understanding of the education problems. The problem with education is everyone has a tacit understanding of the problems of education because people have been through the education system. And so they project onto it what they as a consumer, it's like saying I, I drink at Starbucks every day, therefore I should be able to write the business plan for Starbucks and easily create one on my own, right? It's awesome. And so uh, what we needed to do at that point was say how do we invite teachers into this, into this community? How do we get them to become residents to dwell within this community? And, and we do a lot of, of, of ratio uh, measurements and, and we get to experiment a lot with these thousand events that we do. And we knew that in order for someone's ideas to be infused used within the community, they needed to be at about a 15 to 20 percent ratio. And so we said, well, how do we get teachers at about a 15 to 20 percent ratio in our startup weekends? Because we can't really reach them as well as we reach the technical community. They're not used to this hackathon mentality where people all get together and they don't shower and they build something for a weekend and stuff like that. So there wasn't, there wasn't that sort of... Uh, uh, a demand within the system. And so what did we do? We talked to some teachers. We had two or three that came to our events. And the first thing they told us was, dude, like, don't do these events in May and June and September. And it was an awesome time for us. The weather was good. You know, that's when I like to come to San Francisco and stuff like that. And we were like, oh, like, you guys are busy then, right? And they're like, yeah, we're busy. And so we're like, OK, like, we'll do them at a totally different time. When's good for you? They were like, October. We're like, oh, October. OK, that's cool. We can do it in October. So we do them, like, our busy season, October, early November, and then again in, like, February, March, April, you know, staying away from all your uh, mandatory testing periods and when you're cramming ideas down kids' throats, but that's a different story. Um, but then also it was about, it was also about getting the teachers there. So from start of weekend education, like we are, we, we understand that our power is in these technical communities where we have these, 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 these uh, large groups or, or concentrations of people with technical skills and then we can bring them all together and they can do things. But educators, you guys are more distributed, right? So you're all over the place and you're in rural and areas and stuff like that. And so we had to figure out ways to be able to reach educators and we did these, so I would go to ISTE, I would go to places where educators, places like this, where educators who are, who are interested in innovation and are trying new things and, and and not so afraid as to go and talk that the technical stuff um, have come. And, and we would offer scholarships to them. So we would do little idea contests where they pitch an idea and we would offer them scholarships to come for a weekend getaway to a, to a startup weekend education. Um, and that did an awesome job for us. And that, that was really when we decided that startup weekend education needed to be its own brand. Um, but then we were like, we've got teachers there, but the teachers aren't leading the teams. They're just sort of participating. They're, they're being consultants to these startup groups, right? And so how do we get them to now occupy teachers, not with consulting work, but challenging them to engage in education reform within our, within our, within our, our, our groups? And so um, we did this change in our process, and we called it no building without a permit. And the, the idea was that when in a hackathon, you would get together and you would just start building stuff, right? And they would build and build and build and build. And then hopefully at the end of the day, that would, that would solve some sort of education problem or challenge, right? And so we said, no, 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 no. Like, what we want to do from the beginning is we want to do a design, a human-centered design experiment or, or, or design process where we understand the challenges of education first, and now we're going to define those before we start to build. And all the designers and developers are like, wait, what do you mean we're going to define it? And what happened was that really this, this changed the, the power dynamics. So the teacher who had come in uncomfortable and the, and the developer who had come in supremely confident about what they were going to do and what they were going to do, all of a sudden the developer needed to talk to the, the teacher. And the teacher's perspective, domain expertise, and also frankly their network of customers that they could go and contact and validate with became critically important. And that was critically important for the designer and the developer and the teacher to all be on the same footing from the beginning. And it was about forming them into a team. And, and having that, that, that balance of power happen in the beginning of the process formed stronger teams and allowed that, that the educator's voice to be heard. And all of a sudden, we got this step change in the quality of the ideas that were going in, and therefore the quality of the ideas coming out. But then we said, OK, well, and we, don't, we don't have these educators who are continuing on in this process. They're not kind of thinking about themselves as entrepreneurs, or, or, or I got lots of questions about, well, why is an educator a better educator having gone through this process? And uh, I'm looking at you. You haven't changed your sign yet, so I'm going to keep going. All right. So um, 
the um, what what happened uh, was that. No, wait, wait. So what, what happened was that these, these educators were coming through this process, but now we wanted them to not just be part of it, we wanted them to lead the process. Because what we know about innovation is that it's not necessarily your ability to create, but it's your ability to understand the problem at a, at a deep and fundamental level that allows you to get through all of the iterations until you actually solve the problem. Right? So you have to go through eight, 10 different tries to understand the problem at different levels to continually attack it from different angles before you actually solve it. And so what we added to this process was a concept of doing your business first and then solving it. And so that changed the context of what was actually being built in these weekends. And so technology was no longer the solution Right? You were going out and you were solving the problem. So if, you're, if, you're, if your problem was, I would like to simplify the college application process for kids who have executive function disorders, and I would like to create this system, and, and I'm going to build this, 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 this IT system that's going to simplify that, we said, OK, great. Go simplify that. Go get two kids who have executive function disorders to break down the college application process to a gamified process using pencil and paper and simple process. Show me the secret sauce, then go scale that. Then go get a developer to design it for you and to put it in and to make it into a scalable process. And all of a sudden, from, from that change, the educators began leading the process. They began pitching the ideas and leading the team through the, 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 the innovation process of creating a real education solution and then engaging technology in what technology can do really well, which is scale that process. And so that changed everything for us. And then so then the challenge that we're working on, I'm not going to say I'm done this, but these, these, are the, these are the iterations as we continue to iterate a solution. And then we go back and say, well, what problem are we trying to solve? And they said, OK, great. Well, now you've taught teachers ed tech. But where are the great innovations that are changing student outcomes? OK? And where we are right now with that is that we've changed our process, right? So, so, so Occupy can be about taking possession, ownership, as in military invasion. So where are the educators within, uh, within ed tech? And do, 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 do. I'm going through these faster than I want to, but okay. So um, this one was about the language of, of education reform and what, what a teacher is faced with when they come to a startup week in education. Uh, I borrowed one from a, a Deb Meyer's recent blog post, so some of you might recognize that. The language on the left is the language of education reform and some of the groups that are in there. Uh, it, it feels very innocuous and, and, and apple pie until you put a context of it and say, well, these are reform organizations that are saying they're going to change something. And, and what is it that they're changing? Who's not putting children first? Where, Who's not putting students first? Who's not standing for children, right? The other side of that equation is, are these languages? And so the, the languages that are spoken at our technical uh, get-togethers are, are a hodgepodge of four different actual languages there. So anybody recognize all these terms up here can speak each one of these languages? OK, good. So you've got the language of the developers, the GitHubs, the PHPs, the Rubies. You've got the language of the designers, the UI, UX, the CSS. You've got the language of the lean startup uh, aficionados, the minimal viable products, the Kanban and the Turk. And you've got the language of the finance world. OK, so I'm, I'm going to go right to my closing. So we, we, we changed our process in coaching the, well, well, now I can't even go back anymore. So we changed our process to help coach the coaches. So one of the things that we did that was a, a, a significant breakthrough was that we realized that our process as a whole was attracting people who believe that, 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 that entrepreneurship was for young 20-somethings. And so we got a lot of very eager, very green, very junior, educators who were coming in and who, who might know what they needed themselves in their classroom, but didn't understand how to change a school, didn't understand how to change a district, didn't understand how to create scalable change within education. And we needed another way to be able to attract a, 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 another group of educators. And what happens is we have these coaches and mentors. And the coaches and mentors would come around, and they would listen, and they would help coach these, these, these participants. And, um, what we use them for at this point is we do a case study process with our coaches. So our coaches come in, and they get paired up with, a, so we'll have a principal who will be paired up with a successful entrepreneur and another designer. And what they do now is they walk through the different teams, and they talk to them, and they get this vicarious 
education in what it is to be an education entrepreneur. And these, these leaders, these, these principals and others, all of a sudden who are just interested in coming and saying, well, I'm interested in education and I want these entrepreneurs to be developing things for me, all of a sudden they get this projected case study process that helps them learn what other people should do to be successful education entrepreneurs. And then at subsequent events, those people go and they join in and they're pitching ideas and they're leading teams. And that's led us to a, another level of, of more effective education entrepreneurship that we're really excited about. So I will close because I'm getting waved at. So um, design with the end in mind, having to do with the process of starting something engaging, designing it, going and engaging your customer, and then coming back and saying, what problem did I solve for that customer, and how can I improve on that? And it's about developing innovative leadership in education. And so that's how we plan on uh, assisting and helping in the occupation of education, such that educators not only, oh, this is what we're doing with it, but that's OK, I'll tell you about all that later, so that Educators can not only occupy ed tech, but they can learn the innovation process itself and begin to innovate within education as a whole, with or without the technologists. So thank you. Mm.